You are listening to the Built to Grow podcast. All right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons in studio, joined as always by Randy Angston. What's up, fella? How we doing? Big two zero zero guys, we made it two hundred episodes, so this will be our last show. And uh, <laughs> no, just yeah. it's been fun. Hit the bricks. Another, another two hundred episodes after this are coming up fresh Ooh, for you guys. So hit, yeah, so this hit. is our big episode. We're gonna get deep in the weeds, talk a little bit about what we expect to see from the actual brick and mortar gems of the future going on. We've learned a lot over the years, and I think. Um, Hell, I mean, I think what we're going to talk to you about today, you can implement a lot of this stuff immediately. If you have an opportunity for new locations, maybe you throw some of this stuff in there. But uh, this is just our opinion. I mean, we, we've, we've guessed right a lot of times. We've guessed wrong. Uh, sure. But there's, it's along the spectrum, you know, between, you know, what could happen or where we see things going and, and et cetera. So. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know if I like that word guess. But uh, we, I think we talked to enough Predict. gym owners yeah. that, uh, you know, the, we kind of see – trends and you know we're able to to take educated guesses there you go um but yeah obviously a lot of our time is spent in the mix with not only your facility but yeah. other gym owners and so a lot of it comes back to the math the the things that work what the marketplace is telling us and uh you know that's where these ideas and, and things come from and where we see some of the players you know making changes mm -hmm. and doing things so so let's just jump right into it the you know first and foremost the model uh, we, we can't hit this nail hard enough. We really feel like semi-private training is going to be the long-term, you know, gym of the future. It's already been there. I mean, let's be honest. We've been doing it since 2010 at some capacity. Uh, we're, all, we're now seeing a lot of gyms that had, you know, large group and small group and private just going to only semi-private and as being a semi-private only gym, 100, 150 members, smaller footprint, and doing really well. There's mm -hmm. less to manage, less overhead, and, and for a lot of us, that's that's a lot of less stress too, less staff. Yeah, and and it's like again, it comes back to the math. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. One of the, the the one point I want to drive home throughout all of this is these are this is intentional business. This isn't showing up and opening the doors and seeing you know how things go today. And as we continue to you know coach clients something that just continually stands out to me is the difference of the mindset and the the person who's driving the ship those that take action and want more from their business versus those that are happy with where things are and just continue to show up so if you're listening to this like we say consistently you're probably one of those that wants to you know be in the driver's seat take this information mm -hmm. and use it because this is the stuff that changes your bottom line this is the stuff that makes businesses more productive or more profitable and ultimately your life for sure. Better. And you say that because I, you know, I've seen it too. I've seen these gym owners that, that all they have to do is work a little bit harder and do more of the right things and make a couple tough decisions and they'd be out of the weeds, but Absolutely. they don't do it. And you know, and some of them, I, I heard it in our group the other day, like I, I want a life outside the gym. It's like, well, it's kind of a catch 22. Yep. Like you can't have a life outside the gym unless you get the gym rocking and rolling to where it could afford you the life outside the gym. And it's like, you, you don't want to work hard? Like, what are you doing this for? And if you're a gym owner, an entrepreneur, a business owner, a risk taker, this is this is you. This is in your DNA. You yeah. have to work at this to get it to work. It doesn't just happen. And it's so. like the tipping point, you know? I, I feel like, mo like so many gym owners are right there, right there, and just a little bit of fine tuning and tweaking. Like, they sure. know what they need to be doing. They know where the results are going to be but I just don't want to work hard. but it's just it's just doing that last little bit that's going to make it's that waterfall effect you know well it's a great you've seen this cartoon where there's two guys mining mining yep. and there's a, a pile of diamonds in this one guy is turned around walking back and he's like an inch away from cracking through to get to the diamonds and then the guy on the bottom is like sitting inside the diamond room and he's got all these diamonds and he's holding them up and it's yeah. like that guy just had to work that much harder to get there and so use that as an analogy just just to say hey look guys this you know none of this is really super easy but you're going to it takes work. Yep. So um the the model that I was alluding to earlier that smaller footprint semi private only 100 clients, you know, multiple locations. I, I see this as a solid 
you know, avenue for a lot of us. You can, instead of having a 10,000, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 square foot facility, you can have three or four, you know, 15 to 2,000 square foot facilities that you have, you know, a couple staff there and you're just doing these kind of like morning afternoon schedules. Yeah. And, and, and then what I really like, and the guys over at Fit and 42 are doing this well, as well as Alloway and, uh, you know, and his partnership over there with, with Anthony, they do this really well. It's just this owner operator trainer that has a piece of the business. Yeah. Very cool. You put a, instead of having staff that don't get any cut, you just have this guy that's kind of running the show. Uh, but he has a piece of the, I guess, the profits. Yeah, he's got invested interest in the well-being of the business as well. So to to drive home that point too, I mean, just think about how many things change, how many different aspects of business. I would much rather be really good at having to do a couple of things, like run a two thousand square foot semi-private model, than have a fifteen thousand square foot facility where we've got saunas, a pool. Um, we've got sports and an athletic program. We've, you know what I mean? Like yeah. how the problems between some of these things, they're not even the same business. It's you know what multiple, I mean? It's like running yeah. a, a multiple businesses under one roof. When the idea here is to like maximize the quality of life and the revenue and all of these things, why don't you just do what you're really good at and do it really well? Yeah. And Great point. Cause I mean, as you said it, it just seems so complicated. The bigger things get. Yeah. And that doesn't mean, and like for us, that doesn't mean that you can't have a bigger facility. Sure. It just means like, you know, having athletic programs and adult programs and then having, you know, physical therapy in there and all this, you know, like you said, a pool. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that. And I'm not sure that's worth it sometimes. I don't, like, what's the gain? If you can do, if you can, business is about turning a profit, you know, if you can be yeah. profitable and have the quality of life that you desire on the other end without all of the additional headache that comes with it. Do that. Do that. Yeah. Do that. Simplification. Yep. That's that's what it is. It's just a simplified, you know, way of uh, uh, the same means to an end. Yeah. Or different means to the same end. Different. Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. So so that's one thing. Obviously, the model we're, we're hard and heavy on the semi-private training. So if you're doing large group, if you're doing other things, um, just know that you could do that. I mean, there's there's a future there for some. Yeah, you know, But you're 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 really putting yourself in the same red ocean as every other fitness class organization you, you know when you're doing large group training call it boot camp call it team training whatever you want but that's all you do mm -hmm. you're the same as crossfit you're same as orange theory you're same as the spin studio you're same as the the, the hit program or the boot camp at the park why like why you know if you're gonna do that be the boot camp at the park with zero <laughs> overhead and and then do you know do that as your model so if you're that person and you you kind of see the writings on the wall, like, look, change this to semi-private. That's what we do in, in our coaching program. We, we help gym owners make that transition. We're working on four different gyms right now, mm -hmm. uh, all making that big transition. And, you know, we've got this thing down pretty good. So that's the first thing, model. Okay, second thing is gym design. This is this is something that is, we're, we're focusing on it because we're building Heck a new yeah. location and we're really focusing on the experience and making it not feel like a gym per se. Like I would say that this facility doesn't feel like a gym. When you walk in, you don't even see the gym. You see the the, the mm -hmm. front desk and smoothie bar and stuff. But once you get out of the gym, it's a gym. Like you get it, right? But the new space, we're really working on the aesthetics of the location, the colors and bringing, you know, kind of stepping way outside the box when sure. it comes to what you would think a gym would look like. We're using uh, uh, an architect, we call him an ar ar architect, but he's an interior designer, Quaco Black. You guys may have seen some of his stuff online. He's working with several gyms right now. We're, we're you know, we're excited to work with him and, and get something different out there into the marketplace that, that sets us apart because we're, we're using the interior design as a marketing tool. And that, this is, again, drive home a point here. You could absolutely have gone to what everybody else is doing fairly well or what the industry expects or the standard there and be another one of those like the model you know you could just open up another mm -hmm. of the same but you didn't you went another direction because you're willing to take that risk with the design and, and bring in a different aspect than the expectation everybody else is doing i love that yeah that's that's like foundational that's if i really think about it though is it really taking a risk it's different than what we're doing but like i think the risk is being like everybody else. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's the risk. I don't think taking going so far the other way, it looks like a spaceship and Jetsons and or, stuff. Yeah, like, I don't think that's or... necessarily the risk. Cause I think that's 
you know, people that are going to go to the gym are going to go to the gym anyway. It's going to bring the people that wouldn't normally wouldn't, go to Exactly. So I think that's our net gain is the people are like, wow, this is a totally different mm-hmm. place. This doesn't even feel like a gym. It just feels like a nightclub or whatever. Sure. And so that's that's the direction we're going there. Um, we're, we're bringing a bar into the facility. We're making a lounge upstairs. Uh, you know, of course. Shocking. Yeah. Bourbons. Bourbons. <laughs> we're, but that's kind of, you know, the, the clients can use that. We can have receptions up there and stuff like that. So we're making it more of a social event. Back we're, to that experience. Yeah, we're going back to the experience. Next thing that I would talk about is, um, you know, we're, we're doing indoor-outdoor training. So I think by now people are kind of used to training outdoors with several Mm -hmm. lockdowns and being forced to go outside. Um, We're building that into our model to where like, if this ever were to happen again, we got it. We got a space outside. We're never going to have to close because we can just train outside Um, in Arizona. We can pull that off about eight months out of the year. It's going to be pretty hot in the summer. Um, We know that we won't be able to use that all year, but like, you know, right now be perfect. Sure. Be perfect to use out there. So, indoor outdoor experience we've got this kind of giant door that opens up both upstairs and downstairs and you're going to have this like nice airflow it'll be open and it'll feel cool and, and then you can just kind of train indoor and outdoor and that's something you know that's a big benefit of here in arizona but there's other things and I'm, i mean i don't have anything offhand but you know if you're east coast you know play to what you guys have available or if you're in a colder climate you know figure out what's unique about that stuff and cater to that Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, like there is the opposite season of us, you know, people leave our summers to go back to the Midwest, go back to the East. And maybe that's when you do incorporate some outdoor training or things like that. Yeah. So if I was in the East coast in the cold climate, um, in the winter, how would I train outdoors? You know, maybe I'd just, you know, build heaters and things out into like an, like a big a covered area that you can kind of contain the heat in. And I don't know if that's even like feasible because we don't deal with cold, <laughs> cold like that out here, but maybe put some netting up to where it's kind of see-through, but like it holds the heat in and then you can just train outdoors. And there's, I mean, there's always a way, but absolutely like incorporating something like the outdoors in general yep. into the training because people are going to start looking for more unique things yep. for the experience. And again, we're right on a road. So we're using that as marketing and mm-hmm. indoor out there. are going to see people outside training. They're going to be like, what's going on there? Um, and then the upstairs, downstairs lighting. So we're, we're actually working with Quaco on the out exterior of the building as well. It's basically a billboard the whole, all year round. Yes. So when somebody drives past your location at night, you almost have to consider what that looks like for versus during the day. So if there's like lights going on and it seems cool like it's going to draw your eye draw your attention so the next time you drive by it during the day you might you know it might pop in absolutely so we're considering all these things we've got the outdoor training we're, we've got the interior design going to be off the wall we're also looking at the outdoor um, lighting and things like that um to, to again to use it as marketing so uh, and then the inside obviously we're doing semi-private training so all the things we just said uh, about what to do is what we're doing. So like, I hope we're, I hope we're making the right call. That's what we're telling you to do because that's what we're doing ourselves. That's so a, yeah, that it, we were just, we've discussed this this week. There's a lot of people out there that are just, they, they tell you something, but they have nothing to stand on. No, no resume, no proof of content, none of it. I mean, you guys want to know what we're doing. This is it. Yeah. Tim's putting all of his money where his mouth is right now. A lot of money. You know, and uh, doubling down on this this idea because this is where we see the success. This is the exact roadmap that we're giving you guys right here. Perfect. So now let's step inside the gym a little bit as far as the staffing plans and all these things that, uh, you know, that we're trying to leverage against. So a couple episodes I talked about, hey, how to, how to buffer yourself or leverage against, you know, the coach being so important to the client's results. And, and then not, you know, them maybe moving on with their life. And then you're stuck with like this turmoil. So one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're instead of going like full sledge shifts, we're doing shorty shifts. So like four hour shifts, and then we're going to be able to rotate coaches a lot easier. And I know that's not necessarily going to work for everybody. You got this kind of part-time situation, uh, but it gives us more, you know, players to use mm-hmm. instead of being stuck with just that, you know, two, three, four, like full-time, full boat coaches. 
Um, I'll, I'll bring up a story. We had a, a client here that we trained for years and years. His name is Shane. He owned uh, 21 subway locations here in uh, the Phoenix area. You know, we talk business all the yeah, time. Yeah, Shane was a good guy. And he's always, you know, talking, shooting the crap with me and understanding what we do. And so long and short of it is he, he really focused on having only part-time employees. I think maybe there would be a manager that was full-time. Sure. But he had 21 subways, like 21 of them. And so, and he had probably triple the staff that a normal operation like that would because he was just doing part-time. He goes, I would much rather not be so reliant on the employee that I can just mix and match and switch and cover shifts. And he had more, more call them pawns in the chess game that he can move around the board much easier. That's a good way of putting it too. And, and to the point you're, you're taking the emphasis off of the individual and you're putting it on the role and the responsibility of the, the system the, the, and the system and the, the, the actual delivery of the job, like mm-hmm. the, the, the product. And, uh, that's powerful, right? Because systems do, that's what they do successfully. You can replace any part of that cog and it still works the yeah. way it's supposed to. That's powerful. I think most gym owners in this role, you're kind of at a disadvantage when you have these coaches that are so ingrained in your business that, yeah, you're, you kind of, you're at the mercy of what they decide. They're not happy, then you, you can, can take your business down. There's, a, there's gym owners that do that with their clients. What do you mean? I mean, the, the reason that they they don't make changes to their business is the fear of what their clients may think. Sure, they, they're held it, hostage. Oh, absolutely. So it's a good feeling when you know you're making decisions based on the business and not that one client that's going to be pat, pissed at you for yep. this or that one coach that, you know, they're going to turn the gym on you and all these things. I, I know that that's not cool to say and, like, you don't want to talk about it, but, like, the reality is I I know more gym owners out there that, have this problem then don't have the problem if that makes sense you're so at the mercy of your coaching staff that you can't make some of the decisions you want to make because you're worried about how it's going to affect them Mm -hmm. but when you run the game with a little bit less you know emphasis on the the staffing like you have these part-time players but they're all on the team and you you treat them great they make money and like that's not the point it's like you can't give away your whole business to one person or two people on your gym training floor. So it's weird to say because I was always the opposite. Let's make careers for these folks and let's, you know, make them an important role at the gym. But I would say yes to a certain people like the management yeah, level, but like, like the coaches that are facilitating the programs, the training sessions. Yeah. Like let's, let's step back a little bit. Let's take them off the pedestal and put them back down and really focus on the program that is delivering the results, not the one coach that's, training that person yeah that keep hour. the relationship with the client with the business as a whole yeah. you know not just the one yeah that's tough especially like you said because we've we come from personal training so personal um and you know you want so much of that but yeah. it does it comes with risk and we've we've definitely learned that one the hard way yep okay so this episode wouldn't be complete about talking about something to do with technology there you go so technology is going to play and still play it's always has played some role in in the future of what your gym looks like now i would tell you here we didn't go head first into online training we did it i think we've told you how we do it here Uh, but we have invested in some technology recently we've got a new app coming out that our friend evans built out for us and that's going to kind of tie in all these little pieces of their world around the gym uh, and put it right in the palm of their hand so the technology that I'm talking about is we, we've got obviously the, the scheduling app, but built into that, we've got a food tracking log, a heart rate, uh, my zones built into this thing. You've got uh, your in-body results all tied to that. We've got a, a streaming blog, like a news feed, so we mm-hmm. can put posts up there. Push notifications. We have push notifications. We have online chat. We can chat with different members. You can chat with the, the staff through the app. It's all like it's a family-built app, and, and it just keeps getting better. We've got online training built into it, program design built into it. Yeah, I think video libraries and things, right? Right. So that's the tech that we're you know, doubling down on. That doesn't mean that you can't have something else. You can, you know, have your own online training business that's part of your gym that mm-hmm. some of your clients do, but you're kind of out, you know, you're reaching a different audience than just your your five mile radius. Yeah, and that's a big part. I mean, we've talked about that uh, with I think it was was our Aryan Circle that we had that meeting with, and a lot of we we talked. Everybody had something within their business that they added to that was 
like congruent with fitness, but not, but different. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't mindset. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like let's incorporate a mindset track into our fitness program, or let's incorporate the technology into the fitness program, online training, and uh, I think that's a, that's a great place. Like if if you're looking at things and you want to know how to expand, without going completely outside of the realm, look to things that connect. How can you yeah, layer it? And a great point to this is. You're not going to beat Peloton. Let's just put that out there on the table. Peloton and the mirror and these online fitness technologies, don't, don't even try to beat them. Do something different that, that complements your facility if you're a gym owner, brick and mortar, or go the other way that, that those things can't touch, like the mindset and the actual sure. physical, co like the coaching on Zooms or the coaching on calls. You can do an online training component that those guys can't touch. Yeah. They can scale. They can scale one to many and do these online, uh, on, you know, on-demand libraries and like Peloton blows the doors off of it and, and, and mirror and stuff. Yep. But like they can't reach out to these people individually and coach them through specific things and talk about mindset. So you can you can get your, your wedge in there somewhere. Uh, but for us, we're doing the app and we're going to just kind of have it all in one place. And it ties to their billing and ties to everything. And it, it, <coughs> excuse me, it's, yeah. just brought, it's brought in with a big component is the fact that it simplifies the user experience as well, mm -hmm. because all of those things currently live in other places, right? How many apps do they have to have when they, you know, join the gym? You know, hey, here's those five apps individually. Well, none of that the case anymore. Now it's one app branded to you, specific to Pulse. I mean, it yeah. is so proprietary and. Um, th for the end user, that is a big deal. Sure. I mean, I, there's nothing in my life that I need multiple, like I would want multiple apps for. Yeah, it gets to be a pain in the butt. You mm -hmm. know, you're scrolling on your phone trying to find the different things. So you've got it all one place. So so talk to Evan if you're interested in that. Um, 360 apps. I don't know if he's got a website or anything. I don't know, but we can put in the show notes. We could do that. I'll do that. We could do that. So what have we talked about? The model, the the actual facility, the size of the facility. That that may be a, a something to think sure. about. Indoor, outdoor, the design, the the staffing plan, the program, the technology. You guys have enough. You guys <laughs> have enough to go off of. Um, the last and final thing I will tell you out there: the, the the model of the future doesn't. You know, it does this particular point doesn't touch on that. But the the thing that's going to set you apart, and we've pounded this how many times? What is the special sauce? What is the thing that you get results for your clients? Like, what is it that you do that's different than everybody else, all of your competition? What is it that gets the client a result with you versus going anywhere else? Make sure you own that. And when we talk about this, this is what we say, the orange theories, the orange zone, and all mm -hmm. this stuff that we've talked about. Like, what is your proprietary blend that is the reason why people get results with you put a name on it put your flag in the ground and shout it from the rooftop so that everybody knows the reason they're not getting results anywhere else is because they don't have what you have to offer at your facility get that right and nobody can beat you yes competition becomes irrelevant and price comes irrelevant because they can't buy that thing anywhere else and so figure out what that is and then decide on what your changes are going to be but and then take action and then make the changes <laughs> oh yes oh damn that one small <laughs> piece of the puzzle yeah. go make the changes and, and let us know how you do guys yes all right so that's our 200th episode thank you so much for the support appreciate it appreciate it um and guys until next episode keep changing lives see you bye